How's it going, everybody? Swung out with Crypto TV, and uh, this is a conversation with a Scottish or Irish Viking-looking guy that uh, was at the Civil War, the Bitcoin Civil War, uh, the UASF versus Segwit2x versus Bcash <laughs> conflict, the great, the great fork of uh, 2017, and uh, we had a really great conversation about um, his experiences. Um, looking forward to hearing what you think. This is at the Honey Badger uh, Bitcoin Conference in Latvia. And um, anyway, check it out and uh, tell everybody about this. Share it with everybody. Um, I think this USAF conversation is very important and I'll be doing a lot more content on a UASF post-mortem, if you will, um, for many reasons that go into in the video. Okay, check it out. Bye. Tips below. Tips. Send me some money. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so we're here at the Honey Badger Baltic Bitcoin Conference, and I saw your hat, and I thought, man, this guy, this guy's seen some shit. He was at the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> I survived. He survived. <laughs> we survived. That's why we're here. And we won. I think it's effective to say we won. You know, the debates with Roger Ver are slowing down. They're getting embarrassing. We just had a big one, and it was like. Rough, it's brutal. What do you think of the debate? Uh, I love the debate, and uh, I love seeing how the BTC to Bcash ratio is on a constant slow decline. Um, I think everyone here has contributed his or her part. Um, so yes, we're winning. It's just a matter of time until Bcash is nothing more but an anecdote, and that's my souvenir. Yeah. And, and, and that's where I think it's it's important for us to, to talk about that because it, it it's an anecdote that if people can hear it and understand it, they will understand something really um, profound and important about the way Bitcoin works. So let, let's talk about Yusuf a little bit. Um, and let, let's just go over some basic facts. Um, there was a big debate about how to scale Bitcoin, big blocks versus small blocks. Uh, the big blockers are Bitcoin Cash, Roger Ver, Jihan Wu, who is the, the who is basically CEO, founder of Bitmain, was the biggest bit, uh, ASIC manufacturer, the biggest miner for a while, and then and it's okay. So there's other some players over there, and on the other side you had Bitcoin Core, and then you had the small block sort of people, and then then you had like this sort of corporate kind of alliance in the middle that were Segwit 2x, right? And as far as I remember. About 80% of the mining pools were signaling support for Segwit2x, which was a different development uh, re repo, right? The code was being sort of managed and, and by other people than Bitcoin Core. And, um, but, and they had 80% of the mining pools hashing power signaling support for that. So Bitcoin Core was like in a the minority. They had like 5% hashing power sort of signal support, but they had the vast majority of the network, or at least a great portion of the network, saying something called USAF, which is User Activated Software. Mm -hmm. And what it was, and you know, you correct me wherever I'm wrong, um, curious what, to hear your, your, the way you see this, right? But it, basically USAF was a sort of a soft fork that said we will reject any blocks that are bigger than, than 2 megabytes, right? And you have to be Segwit. Right? Tell us about that. Any block that is bigger than one megabyte. Right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Any yeah, block yeah. bigger than one megabyte, oh, yes. that's right, oh, yes. that's right, yeah. Any, mm -hmm. any block bigger than one megabyte, we will reject. Yeah. So t tell us about that. How, was, how, was, how did you experience that? Um, I was obliged to make a decision when this whole thing came up, yeah. So the options that I had, I could uh, basically um, l leave the whole system, yeah. Or um, take side for the uh, corporate side, uh, the uh, Segwit 2x, or um, go with uh, the B cashers, the big blockers. And I thought, um, what are my principles? Yeah, what's my circle of dignity? What's my line of no more retreat? And um, yeah, so I thought, okay, trustlessness and decentralization, that's what um, to me matters in Bitcoin. I don't want corporate control. Um, I don't want big Chinese companies controlling the whole thing or American entities with the Segwit 2x. Um, so I said, um, 
I'm with the USF movement. I'll configure my node accordingly um, and I'll sit through this no matter what happens. And this is what I did. And uh, a lot of other people did this, fortunately. And um, well, here we are um, more than a year after it and it's been a great success. It has, it really has been a great success. And this is the part that I, I, I find people are, they don't, they, don't, they don't comprehend it. To me it was a big shift in the way that I thought Bitcoin worked. Um, because we always think that the miners are such a crucial part, and they are a crucial part to the security, but what happened was, what seemed to have happened was that there was a big enough um, coalition, if you will, or like a, an alliance of people that host full nodes that are using Bitcoin, that are like in the Bitcoin space, they are the Bitcoin economy, there was enough of those people that say, we're just going to reject anything above one megabyte block size, and we like SegWit, so we're going to support SegWit, and no on-chain scaling, and uh, and if you don't like it, whatever blocks, whatever blocks you mine, we're just going to reject them. And so there was the potential. The great chaos was that there was potential for a fork in the chain, in a sense, where you had two competing chains of different block sizes, and at some point the hashing power would maybe swing from one to the other, and or back, and then reorganize the history of the other completely, and it would just basically be like what the balance that you had would be different if you had new money coming in during that period so it was a really kind of like a hold ground and get ready for for you know some of the you know maybe the worst things we've sort of come up with as far as crypto goes you know question your principles yeah um that was the moment where you had to look deep inside yourself and say this is what i stand for and this is what I'll be standing for until the whole thing succeeds or goes down. And um, before UASF, I ran a node occasionally. Yeah, sometimes I didn't, sometimes I did. Um, ever since that moment, um, I've been running a node and I've been encouraging all my friends who are not that much into Bitcoin to run their nodes or help setting them up a node or getting them a and let's say an easy full node, a bit seed for instance, um, because full nodes matter. Mm. The more the better. And yeah. Definitely. I, I, yeah, definitely. What is your, uh, what is your Bitcoin, what does Bitcoin, sh um, how does it show up in your life? Do you, do you hold it? Do you accumulate it? Do you spend it sometimes? Mm. What is, what, what role does it play in your life? Um, Recently I heard the term hodlers of last resort, yeah. so mm, that pretty much defines my, my main activity at the moment. Um, I don't care very much about price, um, I have my normal work, my normal income, so my goal is um, hodl and accumulate Bitcoin and every once in a while I do some purchases. Um, when I started out with Bitcoin, um, I slowly started learning. Um, I did the um, excursion to altcoins or shitcoins. I'd rather call them shitcoins now. Um, got wrecked a couple of times. Um, learned and um, I now call myself a Bitcoin maximalist, even though this term is <laughs> kind of contentious. But um, that's that's my shit yeah Bitcoin nothing else right right yeah <clears throat> okay, it might be a little bit out of, out of focus but I think we, we, we will survive um, yeah I think you said something really really crucial there which is that you don't care about the price and I think that's that's what made the difference in this part this last conflict um, because miners they do care about the price and they care in a very um, in a very immediate business sort of fiduciary duty grade sense they really they really care about the price like they need the price to be above a certain amount for they be, to be able to pay their employees and pay their electricity costs and justify their infrastructure investments mm. and whereas people that care about bitcoin because of certain principles because of its stands and it holds ground in this certain space it has certain order 
that that is you know it was something that you were willing to take a, a you know a big risk on right mm -hmm. assuming you held some bitcoin throughout it and you know and if you hedged some I, I couldn't blame you i certainly hedged some but but you were you were willing to sort of hold ground and i think and a lot of people enough people held ground there that that the economy that the, the market itself was was on the use have side mm -hmm. and so a lot of the miners just kind of folded and that was really incredible you, you know I would like to bring up two things here. First of all, I remember a, a tweet from probably about a year ago by Jameson Lopp, and he, he tweeted, my exit strategy from Bitcoin is death. Yeah? Mm. Um, I really admired that, and it, um, it kind of brings me to this uh, head because it's a, it's a military design. Yeah, yeah? So um, basically, military is, the force of last resort. Yeah, people who are willing to put up their lives for a certain cause. And um, I see a lot of people, especially here at this conference, who are absolutely committed to uh, building, protecting, and um, advancing the uh, Bitcoin system. Whereas, for instance, with Bcash, yeah, I only see pay chills who uh, change sides as soon as the paycheck comes from someone else. Mm. I don't see loyalty. I don't see principles. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm here. Well, I appreciate you being here. I really do it and I appreciate that, that, that you were there and that you sort of played a, a role in that. Um, I was, I, I'm friends with a lot of, well, I mean, I, I know a lot of people that are in Bitcoin Cash and, and Bcash. I, I knew Roger Ver before this whole thing. I interviewed him way back. And I think, you know, having kind of almost lived around that, that, that niche of culture, right? Just the libertarian, hardcore, anarcho-capitalist, but it's a very sort of specific branch of anarcho-capitalism. Um, they, what I've found is a lot of, you know, a lot of people there believe that co competition is their highest principle in a sense. They just want there, there to be competition in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And that's a weak principle in a sense because it's sort of relativistic, right? Like if any if anybody really, really starts to succeed dramatically, complete like in a sense dominate the market through just sheer competence, mm -hmm. then they start to see that party or that entity as being bad because they're monopolistic or something like that, regardless of their merit, regardless of the quality of their work. And I think that's a flaw. I think that that's, that's short-sighted, even though I, I do think competition is important. But I think that's, that's one of the core reasons why there's so many people, that the way, why the B-catch sort of narrative is attractive to people, because they feel like, oh yeah, it's yeah, competition. Um, I think the Bcash narrative is attractive to all the people who want an easy solution. Mm -hmm. uh, because, okay, blocks are full, let's make them bigger. But um, there are trade-offs yeah, to, really to everything. And um, the Bcashers I've talked to, they are not very much aware of the uh, trade-offs. Like, um, okay, you, you increase um, the block size, um, you will have centralization. What's Bitcoin without centralization? Uh, it's basically dead. Yeah, yeah. It's PayPal. It's it's just another PayPal. And who wants another PayPal? No. Yeah. You know, PayPal is the best of the worst, basically. Yeah. 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 Well, the last thing I, I want to say is like that there's just to speak to that crowd because uh, it's weird. Like the crypto space has grown so much that it's hard to predict exactly what people's sort of political positions are or like how they see the world anymore you can't really like back in the day used to be like libertarians like sort of certain branches of libertarians mm -hmm. and do you consider yourself a libertarian more or less or is that not really like something that doesn't vibe kind of an individualist or like a bitcoiner or <laughs> it's very a, hard a, to a, say a, what I am. Guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not very political <laughs> cool. my opinion is basically live and let live mm. yeah um I prefer the state not to interfere too much with me, mm. um, but I'm not highly political as some people in the Bitcoin mm -hmm. area are. Mm -hmm. I'm not an extreme carnivore, I'm not a soy boy. Mm -hmm. um, I like the uh, Roman term of uh, aureas mediocritas, stay in the middle, yeah. avoid extremes. Mm. My, my only extreme is Bitcoin. Okay. Right on. <laughs> Yeah.
Okay, last thing, uh, let's touch on the, the military design of the hat. So I think that, that's a really interesting thing from the, from the culture. Um, <clears throat> it is, I mean, it is sort of about that, that, that idea that, that, that you're willing to sacrifice everything for a particular principle. And um, that, may have, that may have been the difference and, and, and it's not about, you know, it's, it's, it, that, that is the thing about the, the camera, like, it's not like we're out there with guns and shit, right? Even though it's not like there's anything wrong with guns necessarily, but it's, it's, it's that. Is there anything else, anything, any comments on that? <laughs> I'm just rambling pretty much. <laughs> I'm just saying things here. This is not a professional interview. Pseudo professional. It's perfectly improvised. <laughs> um, I just really like the uh, people here. Yeah. Every once in a while, someone says there is no such thing as a Bitcoin community, and um, I I think there is um, some kind of the smallest common denominator. Um, a lot of the people I meet here. They're interested in the technology much more than in the price. They're interested in, uh, or they share certain principles. Um, decentralization, trustlessness. Um, they're humble. Um, so, yeah, it's just great to be here with uh, not like-minded, but similar-minded people and uh, exchange and learn together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to say something very inflammatory to the Bitcoin Cash people. Roger Ver, you didn't make that. <laughs> you got that? Yeah, you didn't make that. <laughs> Quote Obama. Hopefully. <laughs> you lost it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, thanks so much. It's fun talking to you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Be well. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good conference.